last year. This division was crowned a champion. But the Pittsburgh Panthers is who we will begin with. And they were, uh, what's the best word for this bunch? Um, they were interesting last year. They Their stats were basically a top 10 team all year which makes that loss to Western Michigan, who ended up a 7-5 and five team, all that much more perplexing, right? This was a strange situation. They went 11-3 and three last year. Post-game win expectancy said that they were about 10.38 and 2.62, which, yeah, makes sense. And that's, uh, that's regular season, so obviously. Uh, I am... Mm, I'm interested in this. Uh, this team, PPA margin number 6, Last year, net points per drive, they were number 14. Uh, total plays per game was number 11. So this was a an up-tempo offense that really got after it. Number 22 in turnover margins, so they did a good job of taking the ball away from the other team and also not turning it over themselves. There are a lot of changes here, a lot of changes. Obviously, you lose Kenny Pickett, you lose Jordan Addison, you lose Cam Bright, uh, Lucas Kroll, the tight end. Uh, let's move on to the offense. Let's talk about the offense first. New offensive coordinator Frank Signetti Jr., he was the OC at Boston College. He replaces Mark Whipple. At Boston College, they were running very pro-style kind of stuff, not exactly what Whipple was doing. You're bringing back only 56% of the offense. Maybe that's good if you're going to be bringing in a new a new guy to run this thing. Um, they won the ACC for the first time ever behind a sixth-year senior quarterback picket, a Blitnikoff winning wide receiver, a high-flying offense, like – what what do you do next? You go pro style. Like this move kind of doesn't make a ton of sense, but if you were ever going to do it, now would be the time when you've moved away from your quarterback and your stud wide receiver, etc. Looking at it, uh, the entire offensive line and tight end starters, etc., are back. Uh, skill players are all new. The quarterback Slovis joins. Running back room has plenty of experience. It, in wide receivers, you got pretty good transfers. I would say uh, you're bringing in uh, Kanata Mumfield from Akron. You know you you've got some guys that you can do some damage with. There is talent on this roster. Uh, by the way, overall returning production, number 63, you got 63% coming back, 56% on offense, 70% on defense. Defense is bringing back the number 35 most in the country. And when you look at uh, roster strength, and this is via our buddy's uh, CFB winning edge, uh, Pittsburgh number 23 in roster strength. Number 12 on defense, number 43 on offense. So basically, you're going to be leaning on the defense more so than you did last season. Uh, the defense, even with as much as they were on the field last year, were incredibly efficient. I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, looking at the defense on that side, this was a nard dog masterpiece last year. They kept the defense efficient while having to defend the number 110 most plays in the country that means that there were only 20 teams in the country last year that were on the field more than the Pittsburgh defense, and yet they were number 12 in PPA per drive. I mean, that is just remarkable from that defense, and they're bringing back 70% of it. Uh, the defense returns multiple starters at every level, ton of juniors and seniors all over the two deep. Uh, 2023 could be iffy, but 2022 is still going to be good for this defense, and I think that this team is going to be great on defense whenever you've got uh, Pat Narduzzi, right? I think it's going to be great. Defensive line, one of the best in the country. Linebackers look strong. Secondary's got questions. They were number 64 in pass success rate allowed last year, but they were number 21 in pass plays PPA. So people were able to have success on them. They just couldn't score on them. And that's where it became, you know, they became even more efficient in that regard. They are projected favorites in nine games. You got seven games that are toss-ups, and... Those toss-ups means the point spread is somewhere between, you know, zero and eight points on, on either side. Like, it's a one-score game, effectively, is what the spread is. Uh, the keys to the season here. How is Keaton Slovis going to mesh with Signetti? Like, a wide receiver Mumfield could be a star here. If they don't get too conservative, um, which is something that we've seen Narduzzi do, but Mumfield with Slovis, I mean, that has the makings of something pretty interesting. I'll always trust Narduzzi's defense with this defensive line. My expectations are way up there. I'm still hung up on the offense. Like I, The move just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Other than we know that Whipple and Narduzzi didn't always see eye to eye. 
And I think that can be a good thing sometimes. But obviously in this situation, Narduzzi wanted to go back with somebody that, you know, he felt was more aligned with him uh, on the offensive side philosophically, right? Um, another key to the season, aggressive teams will typically end up with more penalties, but they were number 91 in penalties per game last year. You got to clean it up. Uh, the schedule sets up pretty nice as well if you look at it. Uh, the win total this year, by the way, is 8.5. It juiced to the over a little bit. To win the conference, they are 8-1. to one. Uh, To win this division, they are 2.75 to win. So plus 275 here. Uh, you know, you start with West Virginia, and then you got Tennessee. Both of those are at home. You play at Western Michigan, who is not going to be nearly as good this season as they were last year. You got Rhode Island before you enter into conference play, and then you start off with two home games against Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. Now, what sucks about that is the back six games, four of them are on the road. At Louisville, at North Carolina, Syracuse, Virginia, uh, Duke, at Miami. Oh, and the Virginia game's on the road as well. When you look at these other rosters, there's not a lot that really terrifies me. I've got Pitt going eight and four here. But, I mean, it wouldn't shock me to see him get to nine. It wouldn't shock me to see him only win seven, right? I mean, this is just kind of up in the air. This whole division is like this basically every year. I am curious about it. I will certainly say that. Uh, I've got a loss to Tennessee, loss at Louisville, loss at North Carolina, and a loss at Miami. Yes, a lot of those are on the road. I could see them winning some of the road games, maybe giving up a home game to Virginia Tech or Syracuse or whoever. Right, you could even lose that first game to or to uh, West Virginia, so there's no telling. But uh, but I like them at eight and four. I think that sounds about right with this team. I am so interested in what this offense is going to look like. I mean, that's the biggest thing for me is you go from having one of the most efficient offenses in the country last year. You lose your quarterback, you lose your star wide receiver, but you bring back a lot of everything else. The the bones that made that thing run. Can you recreate it, but make it a little more conservative, which is what they're going to try and do with Signetti? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.